In the last episode of Soap, Chester told Jessica he fools around with other women because he's sick and needs help. Mary convinced Jody to move back home, and that way he could get help with the baby. Danny met a girl named Polly at the cemetery who might help him get over Elaine. And Bert, who has trouble sleeping, went to the doctor for a physical, hoping that might help. Confused? You won't be after this episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells, and this is Soap. Okay, listen, I think you should take the uh, bottom drawers in the bureau because you're shorter, and I'll take the back of the closet because my arms are longer. Are you sure it's all right? Well, there's not much I could do about it now. <laughs> Must be from all those chin-ups. No, 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 Danny, I mean about moving in here with you. I mean, after all, this is your room. <laughs> are you kidding me? My little brother is moving back home. I wouldn't have it any other way. I can't believe I'm back. It took me all those years to move out. But it will make life a little easier. I can go back to work, and I'll know Wendy's OK. Hey, listen, uh, you want the uh, lumpy mattress or the springy mattress? Springy, if it's OK. Uh, it's cool. I like lumpy. <sighs> Makes me feel like there's someone in here with me. <laughs> you know, I remember when we shared a bedroom as kids in the old house. Yeah. You told me my first dirty joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you didn't get it. <laughs> you were so innocent. I was four. Hey, listen, I got a surprise for you. This is a real blast from the past. Ta-da! The hoop, our old basketball hoop. Wow, you saved it all these years? Yep. All right, a little one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Two from the floor, three from the beds. Okay, turn right. off the TV. Well, look at this. It's a meeting of the minds. Uh, Einstein and Dr. Freud. <laughs> it's different! Did you hear Jody's moving back in? Did I hear? My room is being transformed into a nursery. <laughs> Did I hear, he says. Oh, see, the nursery's for the baby, Bob. See, Jody's moving back home, and he's bringing his baby with him, and the baby is going to sleep in the nursery. Look, let me explain it to hey, you. The hey, baby... I, I got it. I got it. God, it's like talking to a brick. <laughs> Look, Jody and Danny are gonna share rooms, so you and I are gonna have to share our room again. Oh. Hi. Oh, Mary, can I please sleep with the baby? I love that baby, and I've always loved that baby, and even more important, I really hate Chuck. <laughs> That's the arrangement, take it or leave it. Hey, man, where is everybody? Jody, come on over here. Oh, look at this, look at that. Is this great, all the kids here? Ah, oh, my three sons, I feel like Fred McMurray. <laughs> Well, you're right, We'll do something special. Come on, what do you want to do? Well, the whole family goes. We'll go bowling, we'll shoot a little pool. Jody, it's your night, whatever you want. Name it. I don't want to go apartment hunting. <laughs> Will you just calm down? No, no, no. That's the way I want it. I'll move. I'll live alone. And if I get murdered in my sleep, it's on your head. That's ridiculous. It sure is. How could you possibly get your own place? Huh? You have to stand in a chair to open the door. <laughs> oh, Jody. Jody, Jody, Jody. Uh, Ma. <laughs> I'm going to make your favorite meal tonight, just for you in honor of your homecoming. Thanks, Ma. Hey, Jody. The Knicks are playing at the garden tonight. These are center court. I really had to pull strings. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was going to take them bowling here. I mean, all of us. I reserved an alley already. I was going to cook something special and drive us all to Coney Island, just like when you were little. Coney Island? Oh, uh, what were you going to cook? Sally Tree, guys, has our alley. Bert, the Knicks are playing the Lakers. 
They are. Lasagna. Lasagna? What time is the game? We can go on the cyclone. You used to love the cyclone. The cyclone? Hey, Dan, you got an extra ticket? <laughs> Frozen custard, Nathan's famous hot dogs. And of course, it's entirely up to you, Jody. Nathan's famous hot dogs? And frozen custard. I love the cyclone. <laughs> what time is the game? Damn. Oh, hold it, hold it. Listen, everybody, I really appreciate this, and it all sounds great, but what do you say we all stay home together? I mean, the whole family, and we can eat some lasagna and, and play with Wendy. What do you say? That's cool. Yeah, sure, if that's great. what you call fun. <laughs> Then we could have a nice chat, huh? I'd love nothing more. Sure. Hey, you got an extra ticket? So, uh, so we're not going to Coney Island, is that it? You mean you still want to go? Okay, Dan, what time is that game? Because if you'd like to go, we could go. I'd love to go. I'd love to go to the game. Well, you know, just long enough to chow down a dog, take a spin on the cyclone, a little frozen custard. Yeah, here, here. Let me have those here. Hey, Thank you very hey. much. Hey, hey, welcome home, Jody. Chuck oh. Pop, get your coat. All right. <laughs> It won't be long, Jody. I'll wait up. Don't bother. Oh. Put the lasagna in the oven for an hour, 350 degrees. <laughs> so wonderful having my family together again. <laughs> yes. Daddy should be here any moment. Just make yourself comfortable. You know, Chester, I feel kind of funny discussing our marital problems with the minister. I feel funny discussing it with anybody. Of course, it would be worse if it were a priest. Well, it would be like discussing a film with a blind man. <laughs> a rabbi would have been nice. They seem very wise. But I suppose you have to be Jewish. I wonder which religion does the biggest business in this sort of thing. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Got stuck at a death. I beg your pardon? Funeral. Just did a funeral. Poor guy got killed roller skating. Oh. He fell? Drowned. Was skating in the park. Couldn't stop. Skating in the lake. Couldn't swim. That was that. <laughs> Left a wife, two kids, and a Porsche with no problems. <laughs> On to happier things. You are the Tates, and you are here because... Go ahead, Chester. Oh, no, Jess, you can go first. No, you tell it better. Uh, well, we have a problem. Uh, not a big problem, really. Actually, it's a little problem. <laughs> but it's big enough to be a problem. It's been a problem for a while. I never thought it was a problem. But, <laughs> but uh, now I see that the problem which is our problem is really my problem. And of course, being my problem, it actually becomes her problem. And uh, that, in a nutshell, is the problem. Well put, Chester. <laughs> Could you be a little more specific, do you suppose? Chester goes through women the way an elephant goes through peanuts. <laughs> See, he fools around with anything, anytime, anywhere. <laughs> he lies, he deceives, he sneaks around. He cheats before work, he cheats during work, he cheats after work. He cheated on our honeymoon, he cheated on our anniversary. He cheated while I was in labor in the hospital. <laughs> in the hospital. <laughs> he has cheated practically every week of every month of every year of our entire marriage. But other than that, he has been a wonderful husband. I see. Well, it's starting to take you a long time to come see me. Took her all this time to catch me. <laughs> of course. Well, uh, I see this sort of problem a lot. It seems to be going around. I think part of the reason is that there are no more Indians. <laughs> Beg your pardon? You see, in the olden days, we had Indians to worry about. Where were the Indians? Were the Indians surrounding us? Were the Indians angry Indians? Did the Indians want our horses? Nobody fooled around because you couldn't relax long enough. <laughs> Now, we got no more Indians. I see. 
The best marriages were in the Apache territory because those were the worst Indians. Hostiles without, no hostility within. We have a lot to thank the Indians for. Happy marriages, nice beadwork. Uh, well, what do we do now that there are no more Indians? Aggravate some other group, maybe. Look, I don't think I need Indians. I want a change. I want desperately never to look at another woman again, and I sincerely think that I can do that. Excuse me, Daddy? Can I please borrow the car keys? Sure, Angel Puss. Thanks. My daughter. I see the resemblance. Well, Mr. Tate, I see your problem. I have trouble understanding it, but I do see it. I mean, if I had such a lovely, feminine, genteel, sophisticated, enticing, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece of gorgeousness in my house, I'd never leave. <laughs> well, yes, of course, but I mean... Gorgeous. See the problem. Gorgeous. Uh, your ministry. Uh, how do you keep your marriage trouble free? Divorce. <laughs> Married 16 years. My wife decided we had to have new carpeting in the family room. Guy came to lay the carpet, probably got a little confused about what he was there to lay. <laughs> Left me with four rolls of Bigelow shag and took off with my wife. How awful. Might have been an Indian. <laughs> well, that's beside the point. We're here to help you people. Now, the problem is Mr. Tate's. It is not your problem. You have no problems. Au contraire. <laughs> now, Mr. Tate. We have a group that meets here once a week. It's a bunch of men like yourself with the same sort of problem. It's kind of a group therapy situation led by a very competent lay therapist. I used to lead the group myself, but I had to quit. The stories got me too excited. <laughs> you should hear those guys talk. <laughs> anyway, I think it'll do you a lot of good. Come tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Well, I've got to run. A wedding. Complete waste of time. They haven't got a chance. <laughs> He's 49, she's 21, been married four times. I give it 10 days. Make it fast. Uh, we don't want any. <laughs> yeah? Is this 58 Milburn Street? Who wants to know? I'm looking for Polly Dawson. I ain't her. <laughs> Do you have me confused with somebody you really hate? You see this? Yes, I do. I see that. Take a good look at it, because in about two seconds, it's going to be behind you. Look, could, could you just tell Polly that I'm here? I'd rather not. For me? Beat it. Look, could I leave a note? Uh, Kenny, what's going on around here? Nothing, Mama. Oh, excuse me. Hi. I'm here to see Polly. Oh, for God's sake, Kenny, let the man in. Hi. Polly, someone to see you. Danny. I was in the neighborhood. I hey, who I... is this creep? Uh, th this is Danny. Hi there. Where'd you find him? Oh, we met last week at the cemetery. Oh, you hang around cemeteries. <laughs> I was there visiting my wife. Oh. And, and you just happened to pick up this black chick along the way so the day wouldn't be a total loss. <laughs> Danny, why don't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? <laughs> uh, I'm Polly's mother, and this is her brother, Eddie. Hi. 
Why don't you get out now while you can still crawl? I think he's warming up to me. Eddie, why don't you get out of here? Next time, I won't be so polite. <laughs> so, uh, how'd you find me? It was easy, really. My stepfather and my brother and me staked out the graveyard for a couple of days, and when you didn't show there, I just started it on the phone book. There's only a couple hundred Dawsons. Oh, I never did tell you my address, did I? Or your last name, or your phone number. Well, you didn't ask. I didn't think it was a good time. I guess you changed your mind, huh? Yeah, I did. I don't hear nobody talking. <laughs> Taking a breath, Eddie. Is it all right if we breathe? Okay, so long as it don't become audible. <laughs> it's just that I felt really good that afternoon. I haven't felt that good in a long time, and I... I wanted to feel that way again, so I found you. Was that okay? Yes, because I felt the same way. You did? Yes. Sounds like a damn movie. <laughs> and you're, you're glad I'm here? Glad? <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm incensed. <laughs> Eddie! When I thought I might not ever see you again, I got a little worried. I didn't. You didn't? Uh-uh. Because there are only seven Dallases in the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> see, I did a little research, too. Well, I guess this means that maybe I can see you some more then, huh? I would say that's correct. Well, I have to come here. Eddie, please. Hey, look, it's only about 7 o'clock now. Do you want to go out? Sure. Let's go. Have her home by 8. <laughs> Mama, I'm going to go out for a few hours. Oh, honey, if you go by the cemetery, stop by Grandpa and say hi. Oh, well, we're not going to go there, Ma. Oh. Ready? Yes. It was nice meeting you. Oh, nice meeting you, Danny. <laughs> See you again, brother. <laughs> You touch one hair on her head, and I will break every bone in your head. <laughs> He's a little hostile, isn't he? Oh, don't worry about Eddie. He gets it from our father. That's comforting. <laughs> hey, Doc. Hey. How you doing, Doc? Sit down. Yeah, all right. Come on. What's the matter? Come on. Why are you so glum? Dow Jones down again. <laughs> Bert, I wanted to talk to you without Mary. Something's the matter with Mary? Wait a minute. Oh, oh. The doc, doc what God, she's sick? Oh, she's not going to no, no, die? No, 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 but Mary, Mary's fine. She's never been better. Oh, good. Thank you, Doc. I love you, Doc. <laughs> I really love you, Doc. In fact, she's pregnant. <laughs> Pregnant Mary? Right. You mean she's gonna have a baby? That's what it usually means. <laughs> a baby! <laughs> oh, I'm looking, a baby! Mary and I must. If this, they'll be our first baby together, Doc. Get some. A baby. Oh, God, thank you. You're terrific. Oh, a baby. Doc, Doc, Doc. Mary and I are gonna have a baby. I know. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. Now, Bert, there's something we have to talk about. What I know, I know about our age. We're not old. Come on, it's better to have a baby when you're older because you're smarter. Really, you got more experience, you know more things, and, and, and you don't care so much about your clothes. You know? Bert, it's not all good news. I, come on, Doc, I know what. You never sleep, Doc. I had three kids. I didn't sleep for five years. One or two naps, poof, that was it. <laughs> Besides, the older you get, the less sleep you need. It's a medical fact. Don't you ever read Newsweek? <laughs> Bert, that's not all. Twins! We got twins! <laughs> twins! Go! That's go! God, that's great! Twins is great! No, no, no it's, it's not... It's yes, not, Doc, it's... I'm telling you, it's great, it's great. I just won't dress them the same. I hate that. <laughs> I got two old maid twin aunts. They're 80 now. They still dress the same. <laughs> Every day they wake up and argue about what they're gonna wear. They're very weird. Bert, that's not it. You're probably right. They were probably weird to begin with. <laughs> no, Bert, it's you. 
Yeah, I have been called weird. <laughs> Bert, uh, you remember the tests we did? Do I remember? You should see my arm. I look like a junkie here. <laughs> and then you remember we did a second bunch of tests? Yeah, she took the rest of my blood. Well, I got maybe a half a cup left dashing around my body trying to cover it all. Both sets came back the same, Bert. Good. That's a relief. Then I don't have to do it a third time. Bert. I'm afraid you're a very sick man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have Mylar syndrome. It's a very rare blood disease. Yeah, so? What's the cure? There is no cure. What happens? What do you, what do you mean? It just goes away all by itself? I'm afraid not. What, ha what happens? It's fatal, Bert. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you sure? That's why we did the second battery of tests. Yeah. It's me? Yeah. No. Bert. No. No, no, you just told me we're having a baby. Bert, you are. Then I can't die. I'm not dying. I can't. Bert, I wish there was something I could do. I wish there was one thing I could do. So long. How long? I mean, what, uh, how, much, how much time? About five months. Five months? Everybody else gets six. They always say six months to a year. What is this? I get five? It, 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 it could be six, Bert. It, 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 no, could, I, be. it could be no, six. No, I don't believe that. I, I don't. This, what do you, what do you call this stuff? It's, it's, uh, Mylar syndrome. Well, then you got nothing for it here. You got, you got, you got wonder drugs and machines and men on Mars, and you got nothing for this stuff here, but Mylar wins? I'm afraid so. I gotta go. Are you gonna be okay, Bert? Apparently not. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. Doc, I'm sorry. Come on, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You okay? Bert, if there's, if there's anything I can do... Are you sure? It's incredible. On the happiest day of my life, you tell me I have no life. I see you, Doc. What will happen with Danny and Polly? Will her brother let it happen? Now that he's dying, what will Bert do? Will he do it quickly? Will he tell Mary? Will he pay his doctor's bill? Will Chester get himself some help at the minister's group? Or will Chester help himself to the minister's daughter? These questions and many others will be answered on the next episode of Soap. Soap is videotaped before a studio audience.